way you'll know you're getting there is when you can't go any farther. Now, luckily, Admiral Hurley should be waiting for you, and he'll take you to the East Brother Light Station, which has got to be the only lighthouse that doubles as a bed and breakfast inn, at least the only one I know about. Forward. A little history here. Back in 1976, the Coast Guard was about to replace all their antique light stations with unmanned concrete blocks. But when it came to the East Brother Island, some citizens of Richmond got together and had a plan, a non-profit bed and breakfast inn. The Coast Guard agreed so long as the public had access and the station remained in full operation. Not long after, the Hurleys answered an ad in the paper and soon became innkeepers. Well, once you're ashore, it doesn't take long to see what a special place this is. This is sort of the activities room out here on the island. Not a lot to do here, right? Not a whole lot. Uh, it's a unique property in that you come over um, just to enjoy the salt air, the seagulls flying by, uh, the wind in your face. Yeah, it's really romantic. Now, you have no radio, no TV. Not a thing. No contact with the outside world. Uh, for all intents and purposes, we're 100 miles out to sea, and yet only a quarter mile offshore. Do you know a dog has gotten here? I have a feeling that we do have one here. That's right. Hello, big guy. All right. Now, you have two of these dogs that have the thickest coat of fur I have ever seen. Actually, insulation. They do swim with the sea lions who come off the island here. And well, now, let me ask you about this place. Uh, Here's a Victorian home sitting out in the middle of an island that a lot of people don't even know exists. What's the history? What's the story? Actually, this uh, whole building, the whole complex, was built here in 1873 as a lighthouse. And it's been a functioning lighthouse ever since. In fact, we're still an unmanned Coast Guard station. And uh, we had originally two sets of lightkeeper families live in that house, one upstairs and one downstairs. So there were two couples manning the old Fresnel lens, the oil-burning wick that's in the tower. Now we're automated and uh, the old diaphone foghorns that we might uh, get to hear a little bit later. Really? So now it's a bed and breakfast inn. How many rooms? We have four rooms total. Uh, it operates Thursday through Sunday evening, so only four nights a week, all year long, regardless of the weather. If it's raining or whatever, we get everybody donned out in slickers and pants and make the crossing in our little open boat, and it's really an adventure. We what does it cost? It's running two twenty-five per couple. Now, that includes boat transportation, uh, tours of the island. Uh, we put a glass of wine in your hand when you first get here. The focal point of the evening is the dinner. It's a six-course affair. It's nicely presented on china and crystal, and uh, it includes champagne, wineries from California, and at-dinner cocktails. Breakfast the next morning, and uh, the boat ride back at uh, 11 a.m. Back to this $225. For a lot of people, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Is there another way people can come see this place? Exactly. Uh, we do have a day-use program uh, that affords uh, everyone the opportunity to see us. It's a $10 per person charge and they come over at 11 a.m. and they return at 4. And during the day, we give them a tour of the island. We'll blast the old diaphone foghorns for them, 17-mile range. And, um, and they treat it like a picnic in a park. <laughs> High five. High five. You and your wife and child live here. Right. All year round. All year. What's it like living out here removed from everything else? It's quite an experience. I think we... We're, we have the opportunity to experience something that uh, most people will never have a chance to do, and that's uh, getting back to nature. Uh, we have to worry about things like the weather. We have to worry about things like water. We collect all of our own water here. We don't have any water piped over from the mainland at all. So it's an adventure uh, uh, all year long to see if we can collect the water for the summertime use. So it's all of those things uh, wrapped into one. It's, it's quite an experience. It's wonderful. Do you ever get used to that foghorn going off all the time? Uh, what foghorn? I, I don't even hear the little 30-second blaster that we have. That's about a mile and a half range. You mean you don't hear that right now? No, well, now that you called my attention to it, I do. But normally, I just block it right out of my mind. It's like living next to a railroad track. Let me hear the other one. Can I hear you the other me, one? You want to hear the big one? Yeah. OK, we'll give it to you. OK. While Lee's getting that ready, let me remind you that you can make a reservation here to visit either for overnight or just for day use. Just call the East Brother Lighthouse. Now, if you can't make the boat, let me give you some other recommendations of places that you might want to eat or stay in the area.
The regulars in town seem to go to the Baltic for lunch, although they serve dinner too. Now, this is a comfortable Italian place with comfortable prices. They serve lots of pasta dishes, veal and fish. Uh, it'll cost about seven to ten dollars for an entree for one person, and you'll probably meet some local folks from Point Richmond. The Hotel Mac down the street is more of a dinner place, and it's more traditional with continental cuisine. It also is going to cost you a little more to eat. Expect to pay $15 for an entree, but the food's quite good. Now, if you have time for an unusual drive, just before you get to the San Rafael Bridge, where it says the Point Malat exit, just follow that road. It's called Western Drive, and you'll get an idea of what this area used to be. 